Hey everybody, <clears throat> I decided to go live again. So let's see if people join me. I want to talk about <clears throat> off the grid living some more while I'm making a cup of tea over here. Uh, my uh, webcam is still a bit wobbly, <laughs> so I can't touch my table. Well, that's okay. Uh, <clears throat> I've been, uh, you know, researching things like van life, homesteading, off the grid living, just to get a, you know, nowadays, thanks to, thanks to TikTok, you can see uh, what other people are doing with their lives, right? So you can do a little research. And what's funny is that if you watch a whole bunch of these van life videos, it's all the same. It's all couples, boy, girl, white people in their vans, converting them and then uh, going to travel They're around the UK, around Europe, around the US. We're all doing the same thing. <clears throat> I thought that was very interesting. This is uh, almost something very typical of our kind of people. We like to roam. We like the concept of freedom. Of course, the, uh, the ancestors of the South Africans had their wagons. And so did the ancestors of the Americans, uh, US people. They had their wagons going east, right? <laughs> uh, you should look up some pictures of these people, the way they uh, traveled around the US, where they, the way they traveled uh, uh, east in their wagons. Because those people look incredibly healthy. They were not fat. There were no fat people in those days. <clears throat> Uh, and that's quite, quite interesting. Uh, and of course, our European ancestors from way back were also nomadic. Uh, you know, I have these uh, Yamnaya or Aryan ancestors, right, from the Pontic steppe. They had wagons there. They had, say, um, two cows or so pulling a, a wagon that they could uh, sleep in. So the idea of uh, having a, a van or a wagon or a cart or something to to become mobile is very, very attractive to our people. You stack up on water, you bring your own water, basically, or if you stay near the rivers, you can always go find some water somewhere, but you basically carry your water along with you. Then you carry uh, what food you need, shelter you need. And of course, it can be as primitive as you want. And perhaps that's why people in the past were actually simply very healthy people. Because, sorry, those who were not healthy they just went extinct. They died out, right? So uh, let's see if there's some people coming into the live chat. Yeah, I see some people. Huh. Manage start comments. Not now. All right. So I'm using TikTok Live Studio. It gives me a bunch of pop-ups here. All right. Here we go. Hi, how are you doing? If you have any questions. So let's talk about off-the-grid living some more. So you can... Uh, there's many different levels of uh, uh, RV, recreational vehicle, vehicles, or uh, just what I would, you know, you have like the, uh, you know, the Volkswagen van, the surfer van from the 1960s and 70s, right? Uh, that's, uh, there is this need among our people to get moving again. I think it's telling. Uh, Carl Jung, the Swiss psychoanalyst, wrote a whole essay about it called Wotan. He, he named it after the, the old Germanic god. That people had become restless again in his day and wanted to move again, wanted to uh, hike again and travel again and do van life and go off the grid and homesteading. It's almost as if our people know that the end of this adventure has come, the, meaning the end of industrialism, the end of uh, uh, urbanization, the end of capitalism perhaps is nearing and although many other peoples around the world uh, still seem to be eyeing the west for its wealth which i find always a little bit peculiar because you know once you have material wealth you, it it satisfies you for a day like you you purchase a new tv it satisfies you for a day and the next day it's just the, the same thing you always have right it, um the high you get from acquiring stuff is very uh, uh short-lived so we know this we have lived with this wealth and the chinese the east asians they're living through this wealth the japanese are living through this wealth but we've also found out that it doesn't satisfy it's not what we want it's not what we really want what we really want is adventure and excitement and freedom to roam and so that's why i think um i think a lot of people are thinking of uh going off the grid 
hopping uh, like converting their their sprinter their mercedes or their uh, whatever right their uh and so on into some some livable uh, home a mobile home right uh and i think uh what it comes down to is that uh we're going to try to escape those i've always i've always felt that way i've i call it the uh the es the escape to freedom like we're we're leaving this urban prison behind or the return to freedom we're leaving a world behind that we don't care about so much anymore even though strangely our ruling classes have waged so many bloody wars to acquire all this wealth now that we have it we the common people find out that you know this isn't it <laughs> this is not what we want uh hi esther you're irish okay yeah i've been following ireland because um uh, uh, you seem to be like the first real popular revolt against this whole mess that we're all in. Everybody in Western countries is, is experiencing the same damn sh troubles, <laughs> shenanigans, shit, you know. Uh, and we're going to uh, we're going to be watching Ireland. I hope it spreads like a wildfire across all countries in Western Europe, at least. You know, what's sad is you now in France we had the uh, yellow vest revolts, but nothing really came out of that. You know? Nothing happened, and that's a real problem. Yeah, I get it, yeah. Someone writes me in Dutch that I understand things, yeah. Well, I do. So Esther wrote, uh, you like to be in the past, less control of the government's greedy hands. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we all want that, that, that lifestyle where you are effectively responsible for, for yourself and your decisions. If you want to have um, children or so, you raise them yourself. It's going to be like homeschooling. Someone from Australia, his name is Shane Simonson, South Australia. He's working on new kinds of agriculture. He's actually planning for, you know, what to do af after the apocalypse. <laughs> you want to have new kinds of agriculture where you cannot rely on the modern world to supply you with, uh, with uh, all sorts of modern fertilizers and so on. So you need new kinds of uh, uh, plants and crops to, uh, to grow. Or you need to know at least which ones you're going to have to use, right? Depending on the soil where you live and so on, right? Uh, and so that's uh, that's the next step for all of us. I think this system that we've built, this urbanization industrial system, is not going to last. You know. Yeah, you're uh, you're the fighting Irish, right? You love your own. Yeah, yeah. We need to uh, copy your fighting spirit in the Netherlands, in Germany, France, England, everywhere. All right, somebody couldn't use their debit card today due to a technical malfunction. All right, you know, that's the future. You know, we are so reliant on the Internet and the communication systems. If these backbones break down, nothing will work. So what are you going to use for payments now? You're going to actually have to go back to paper and coins and gold and silver and so on. You know? Yeah, we're all very dependent on it. At least, you know, I must have spoken about this before. But when uh, I, I saw a documentary about people, nomadic peoples living in Mongolia, so back to the topic of uh, off the grid living, uh, and they, uh, can, they, they milk their yaks, I suppose, and they turn the milk, they churn the milk into butter. But the butter, if it's properly stored and cooled a little bit, you can store butter for over a year and it remains edible. And butter is a source of animal protein, high quality protein that you can use to feed your kids and feed yourself and cook in it and so on. Right. And so they actually used butter also for payments. They could pay each other in butter. And the way they keep it cool is they put their butter in a little basket and they just sprinkle some water. They keep it in a shade, but they sprinkle some water on top of the lid of the basket. And so that the water evaporates and that keeps the box cool. So you can have a cooling system like that. It takes a lot of work, a lot of, um, discipline to make sure you always sprinkle some water on top of the lid to cool that box for your butter but it is a great way then like you don't even need money you need i mean what do we have money for to buy food that's the most important reason why you have money so you can pay rent and buy food now if you're a mobile if you're off the grid you need money for supplies if things break down you need to pay repair people who are also around and to buy food and so why not use food such as butter as a payment method you know, I thought that was very clever. 
you know, uh, you saw a clip of Berlin that looks like Saudi Arabia. Uh, yeah, I know. I saw a clip of uh, the new police officers in Canada, and they were all wearing turbans. Something really strange is happening. Actually, don't be afraid when they when the people coming here they frame it as colonialism. Like now it's our turn to colonial colonize Europe. Actually, they're losers who are going to be holding empty bags. They're latecomers, late to the party. The party's over. The cake's been eaten. Uh, the music's turned off. Everybody's going home, and now these losers are trying to break in to have a party, right? So they're late. So. Yeah, taking over Berlin. What is Berlin? Berlin is a concrete jungle, just like Paris, London. All these big cities are just a bunch of concrete, glass, and steel. You can't eat that, and you can grow nothing there. So there is no such thing as conquering a city. You know, there you cannot conquer a city unless you are looking to starve yourself there, because nothing grows there. It's incredibly stupid. So the way I would frame this is... You have basically uninformed, low information people coming out of Africa and India thinking they're going to get their hands on the Western wealth, but not quite understanding that this wealth is produced or was produced during the industrial age largely because the middle class Western people were so willing to work as slaves in the factories and in the offices. So what are you conquering? Imagine you have a factory and you have to work 100 hours a week to operate it and now you have these foreigners coming to conquer your take take over your factory really are they going to work 100 hours a week because that's what's required to keep the operations running so no they're not going to do that and that means it's just the end of it all they will starve and we will have the opportunity to cut loose and leave so i really i don't worry about the so-called uh New York, the new the new colonizers coming out of the south the global south colonizing the global north or something that's just nonsense Yeah, everything is accelerating, right? You know, right. The Irish see what's happening in other countries, and that's why you're standing up. Yeah, and we see what you're doing in Ireland, and we want to stand up too. Because it's just, I, I saw a report where the plan was, so Ireland has about 5 million inhabitants, if I'm not wrong. And they want to add another million of foreigners, and they want to spread like 50% uh, has to be spread to um, uh, Dublin. I think Dublin is Northern Ireland, right? So I, I don't, I'm not sure exactly if Dublin is or isn't part of the UK or something. But anyway, they want to put half of them in Dublin and the other half spread around all the other towns. Uh, basically, uh, they are trying to deliberately drive you out of the economic positions of power. But then again, I always imagine that this is a good thing. This is a benefit for us. We have an opportunity to cut loose from the industries and from the factories. And there's that window of opportunity for us basically to burn the whole shit down and, and, and free ourselves from this, from these slave colonies, really, these urban slave colonies. All right, my, my webcam is a bit wobbly because I, I can't touch my, my table here. But. Yeah, I read, I read about Julius Evola. But, you know, I think he's like a Roman Catholic traditionalist and I, from the Italian perspective. So I understand that, but I wasn't really a fan of him. But, uh, maybe just because I read those books like more than 10 years ago, you know. So it's been a long time. I don't remember everything about it, you know. Right. But in this globalist plot to erase our national identities and our sovereignty, we actually have, I keep talking, I keep saying this over and over. I want to repeat it again, is that we have the opportunity to cut loose from these systems and realize that our nation was never the flag and the anthem and the border. Our nation was us, the people, our blood and our flesh, basically. That's what it's really about, you know? What do you think of the Slovakian prime minister? Yeah, I know he, Robert Fico, right? He got shot because he's like a nationalist. Uh, basically supportive of uh, Russia. So Orban in Hungary is getting scared because obviously everybody knows that the West assassinated or had uh, the prime minister assassinated. You see that countries like Serbia, Hungary, Slovakia are clearly aligned with Russia, clearly um, welcoming Chinese investors as well. And so you see that Eastern Europe may be having second thoughts about the European Union. And I think... That makes perfect sense to me, 
uh, economically, in terms of morality, if you want to have like healthy families, <laughs> you go with China and Russia probably, right? Uh, the Western leadership, why they chose to go with the LGBT is such an unfathomable mistake that they made. Basically, uh, did, you, did you hear about this? People are losing interest in reading the news. For the past 15 years, despite social media, the number of people who actually like a news article or share a news article has been going down for 15 years now, meaning there's less and less interaction with mainstream news. Um, and, and I know why, because it's largely negative, but also because they've been pushing that LGBT so hard. Basically, you can't even open a newspaper and you won't see these freakish trans monsters on the front page bending over flashing their buttholes or something right you you don't want to see that so you uh you just put the newspapers away you don't read them anymore if you start to develop if normies like normal citizens start to develop an anticipation they anticipate well the news is going to be bad or it's going to be some more disgusting shit then they're just not going to pick up the newspaper anymore so there's a total disconnect now between the ruling leadership in the West trying to push this degeneracy onto the people and the people simply refusing to read it. They don't, they're not going to absorb that or read that. Same with Netflix. Like if you watch too much Netflix and every series has this new trans character included, you're not, you're just, you're just going to cancel your subscription. Like with Disney, Walt Disney, right? Well, Disney went woke, get woke, go broke. Disney tries to push this trans stuff and this gay stuff onto you. And what do you do? You just quit going to the cinema. You just don't watch those movies anymore. Just watch the rerun of The Lion King or something, right? All right? The problem is the Bolshevik globalists own most of the Western leadership, right? Yeah, they're all pedophiles, you know. That's how they control them. So they're taking their jobs or not working. I don't understand the narrative. They're not taking any fucking jobs. Like 75% of the migrants in Germany doesn't have a job. They're just collecting welfare. So... Uh, and we don't want jobs anymore either. I'm arguing that we should cut loose and kind of precipitate uh, economic collapse so that the newcomers will starve and we will be free. We'll have our freedom back, you know, because we've been nobody gets this. But 500 years before the transatlantic slave trade started, white Europeans, my own ancestors, were serfs to the feudal lords. And we have been serfs for like a thousand years or so. Like serfdom, feudal serfdom was not even abolished in Germany until after slavery was abolished in the USA. So it's quite, quite astonishing that people think that we owe the blacks anything at all. Certainly the common people, normies, do not fucking own black people anything. We were serfs. We were ourselves uh, people who were not allowed to have private property, for example. Why should we pay back for something we never had? So it's clearly nonsensical. Let's see, I want to read some more of your comments over here. Don't fall for the demoralization, but it's hard to convince other normal people. Yeah, well, just keep talking. That's what I do. I just keep pushing. You know, lately, uh, I notice more and more people seem to be rec seem to recognize me when I go outside and walk down the streets. Uh, women, too. Lots of young women. <laughs> That's fun, right? Look, there's that Johannes guy from TikTok. Yeah, so I'm starting to become a celebrity. <laughs> nah, just kidding. But it is, it is. I noticed that there's uh, more and more people start to recognize me outside. Yeah, so that's funny. Small victories in the Netherlands with the asylum rules. Yeah, well, I don't believe in politics anymore. It's just a waste of time. Uh, look at these people running our countries, man. They're just such total awful people. Whether they're left wing or right wing, conservative or liberal, they're just not all right. So people in the West benefit more from slavery. No, we don't benefit from fucking anything. That's nothing. Oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, okay. Oh, so you say there's slavery in places like China. I didn't know about that. Is there slavery in China? I suppose they have cheap labor somehow, some way. But the Chinese are benefiting from it now. I mean, what, what do you think will happen in the next 50 years? I think China will basically buy Eastern Europe. Uh, and they're going to try to take Western Europe as well, which comes to the, brings me to the following. 
it is it is it is possible that the Western elites, like the Anglo and the Americans, may throw Western Europe under the bus or something. Like cer certainly they're going to sacrifice Germany, and maybe France as well. Throw us under the bus. So you got to prepare for that. You know. When tradition is dead, all right. So there's a place for everything. All right. So I've been reading up on uh, some books by Martin Heidegger and some other authors that try to explain to me a very complicated topic that I had some time. I needed some time to wrap my head around it because I was not educated or framed into believing it. I was always. I came from the world where I thought time is like. Either time can be linear or cyclical, but it, at least there is a past, a present, and a future, right? Uh, and then there is some sort of sick progress. It can be cyclical or linear. It doesn't matter to me. Um, you can have this, the, it can, it can come, history can come in cycles. But then they, the way Heidegger explains it, and it's, it was very difficult for me to decipher it, is no, 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 it's actually very different. It's like we have, we all start at a sort of, uh, peak time where everything was very magical and people were individual people and groups of people were incredibly powerful in a sense in the way that they could shape their reality and this very quickly diminishes and flatlines basically bottoms out and then we tend to live most of our time in that bottomed out state uh, until new people renew their spiritual energy cut loose from that uh, depleted state and renew their their magical, spiritual, and uh, religious energy to go back to one of the high ages, and then of course very quickly it, that deteriorates again. So that's more of an idea of instead of having a progress toward the future, toward utopia, basically the idea of the Garden of Eden, namely, namely that uh, it was better in the past, everything was better in the past. It starts to decline, but we spend most of our history living in a state of decline until one day people new people break loose from this declined state and start over with new uh, new spiritual energy, new religious energy. And I think that's what we're about to do in Europe, in the Western world, especially like the Germanic, Celtic type peoples. We've been living in this, this cold state of affairs like capitalism and socialism and uh, liberalism and, and industrialism and urbanism. It has brought us to the point where life is no longer lived, but we have to, we just follow the rules. We're like almost machine like, and this is why I think you see so many people dream about robots. The robots are going to take over, you know, because we are have become almost soulless vessels, uh, and you have to wonder, you know. You have to wonder where this is going. And I think we are we are going, we Europeans are just as, and this is really funny, just as now the Asians and the Africans and the Indians are entering their their uh, stage of urbanism, we are exiting urbanism. We are basically ahead of them. We are a step ahead of them. We are going back to the spiritual roots of it all and make ourselves powerful in a very different manner. So, uh, uh, hold on, I'm going to look look at your comments now. Uh, this I I never pay attention to the brands, dude. I have no no idea what this is. It says something on it. Rage Age. That's the name of the hoodie. Rage Age. It has a little logo over here. It's hard to read it. Uh, you cannot save a collapsing civilization, but I say that it is good to collapse a civilization. It, the time has come for the West to collapse so that we free ourselves and use that kinetic energy of the collapse to immediately, like a fireball, you know, kickstart something new. At least that's how I always imagine it. Right, right. Washington, D.C., the Federal Reserve, they will sacrifice Europe before they allow the U.S. dollar to fall. Yeah, they will throw Europe under the bus for sure. The euro will go, go down, and possibly that means uh, the gold and silver prices are going to blast up. You need me to save Europe. Well, I'll keep speaking, and eventually I hope to end, end up in some role where I can be a more visible leader. Uh, but you know, in our time, that means you're going to get shot at. So <laughs> uh, I'm ready for that, though. It's just I'm, I, wouldn't, I would still take the job, you know, but you would also need to accept that, you know, it might be short-lived. 
does China have a huge prisoner population? Okay, they're forced to work for free. Oh, okay, so they have an internal slave population. Okay, very interesting, right? So, you th so did Dugan get these ideas about time from Heidegger? I'm not sure. I think it, it must also be mentioned in the Bible, of course. So maybe they both got it from, the, from that. But uh, I, I don't support Dugan's Eurasianism. I, of course, I want I see Europe, Northwest Eurasia, the white people of Russia included, as more of an independent ethnic group, like the Han Chinese. The Han Chinese in East Asia, they are the largest ethnic group in the world with the most powerful, with the most power. Um, and we could be like that too. If the, if the white people of the Northern Hemisphere would somehow be able to work together, uh, if we would start seeing ourselves as a race again, yeah, we might have a chance at uh, uh, putting ourselves on the map. What I did like about Dugan is the way he explains individualism. So there's some parts of his philosophy that I agree to, of course. So Dugan talked about, talked to Tucker Carlson about individualism. So I'll just, I made a video about that on my YouTube channel at The Great Johannes. So I'll, I'll just recap it that, so I'm a man and if you're a man, then we are men. And liberals, they hate that. They hate that you can have a category of men, women, children, and grown-ups. They want to deconstruct all these categories so that I'm no longer a man. I am a, a zush, and you're, a, you're something else. Everybody has to... So basically, they want to have 8 billion people with 8 billion made-up different genders to deconstruct the idea of men and women. They think that these categories themselves are somehow oppressive because the Bible said there's man and woman, right? And that's just completely insane. They're just mentally ill. Uh, so that was a good point uh, by by Dugan that we've gone too far with individualism. And of course, if you don't want to go along with your deconstruction, then they'll make you. You'll have to submit yourself to a minority who believes they know better than they know what's best for you, right? <laughs> no, they don't. Yeah, new iterations. Yeah. All right. So. Actually, uh, I want to comment on this. They say, someone said that robots are turning to into a reality with AI. Actually, AI is incredibly dumb because it only looks at existing facts. So there's these researchers who look at cognitive flaws in human minds. And it turns out the so-called AI, ChatGPT4, has the exact same cognitive defects. So uh, they overvalue certain things and they undervalue other things in an illogical, irrational way, just like average human beings do. And that's because the present AI was trained on the news articles of the New York Times who are written by liberal leftist women. So basically AI is a, is a dumb woman, a, West, a rich Western but dumb woman. Uh, and they, <clears throat> they can't reason very well. And ChatGPT is just like that. And the second reason why AI cannot be smart is because AI cannot look at the future and imagine new things. That's what we humans can do. I can imagine tomorrow I'm going to make music like so and so, come up with a new melody. It's going to be all original. AI has no original content. All they can do is, it's basically a search engine that looks at the past and then it can uh, inform me about it. And secondly, the robots, I always thought about slavery. Because why would you buy a $5 million household robot if you can get a slave for $500, a human slave, or even for free? You can get a bun from the street, you give him a haircut and a shower, and you got a free slave, right? So slaves are probably going to be, I think they're going to bring back human slavery uh, because robots are just going to be way, way too expensive. Why would you want to have a garden robot if you just have a, have a slave, you know? Isn't that why we had mass immigration in the first place, to get these Mexican guys do your gardening for you, right? Right. You're right. Chinese labor. Right. I'm I'm right about AI. Okay, somebody studies IT over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the way I see it, they are large language models or something, right? And so they look at existing data sets. And then it just re rephrase that in a in a way that humans can understand it, but it doesn't mean it's intelligent. No?
I think the robots are going to become so costly eventually. It will push uh, a lot of other things. I mean, we have an energy shortage globally, and now we want to have armies of robots that need extreme amounts of energy. It's just not really feasible. All right, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure AI has AI has some purpose. I I think uh, the current purpose for AI is actually propaganda because you can use AI bots to start commenting on their people's TikTok videos and on X and so on to uh, steer the narrative a little bit. On the other hand, I think people are also it may, it may be a reason why people are tuning out of social media. More and more people are so so bothered by the negative comments you get. A lot of a lot of it may be bots. I can't tell the difference if it's a bot AI or something. Um, but there's so much negativity in the comment sections that I think normal people they make a couple of TikTok videos and they get they get these really nasty negative comments. I think they just normal people just quit after that. They just why would why would I allow this kind of abuse? Right? You have to be a you have to have like a real motive or a mission almost to keep plowing ahead uh, through all this negativity. And that's a, that's a big difference, right? So I think normies may also then be a helpful element in all this in this all this story, because normies will naturally tune out from things that they don't feel right about, right? If it's too much LGBT propaganda on TV, they'll just turn off the TV. They'll do something else. If there's too much negativity in the, in the social media, they'll just tune out. They'll quit. You know, that's how I see that. Yeah. I don't believe human beings are programmed, by the way. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I think I used to believe that. Yeah, I used to think that our humans are like bi biological uh, machines or something. But I don't believe that anymore. I think we really do have, a, some of us at least, have a soul and a free will and a mind of our own that can generate new original insights about the present and the past and the future. And so we're not really programmed in that sense. I saw a whole research that said that uh, your DNA actually is only a list of ingredients, but it does not include the information about how to put the ingredients together. Uh, you know, my eyes may look very dark under this lighting. I actually have light hazel eyes. And it turns out that the colors for the color coding for your eye, for example, um, although that color information is stored in your DNA, the expression of it happens only in your iris and your eye, but the DNA in my fingernails has the same information. So why why aren't my fingernails light hazel, the same color as my eye? Turns out the information, whether or not to express eye color in the eye or not and not in your toenails, uh, is not stored in the DNA, not in the genome. It's actually stored or likely stored in the behavior of the enzymes that, that work with the uh, DNA. And so that makes the story of heritability completely different because it means that you cannot really do uh, genetic studies just with DNA and genome. You need to actually uh, probably even look at human culture together. So, okay, let me try to back up a little bit, try to explain to you a little bit of a complicated uh, matter here. The whole idea of Charles Darwin's belief in evolution theory and in DNA and heritability was the belief that we are individuals and that our individual DNA, our genes are competing with each other to optimize themselves. Like self-optimizing at atoms, basically at the atomic level, meaning an atomized individual, atomic genes, meaning the selfish gene theory by Richard Dawkins. You may have heard about that book, The Selfish Gene. Um, and if, however, DNA is merely a list of ingredients, but the actual expression or the actual cooking of these ingredients uh, that information is not stored in the DNA, but in, say, in the culture, right, in the social life of the beings that carry this DNA, then you have a big, big problem because all of a sudden that means we are not individuals and we are actually, we are actually groups of organisms. You cannot see a human being uh, separate from other human beings in that sense. It means you need, in order to understand our actual evolution, whichever way it happened, you have to look at the culture as well. Uh, and of course, culture, again, it feeds back into your DNA. So it's basically race and culture working together uh, in response to an environment. 
So it's way more complicated. It means we're not individuals, but we are actually, we evolve as groups, right? And that makes so much more sense to me. There was an author who also mentioned this, uh, C. Hallpike in the book Ship of Fools. I'll type it out, you know? Ship of Fools by Hallpike. He writes about this, and there's another one, uh, The Science Delusion. I forgot the author of that book, The Science Delusion. Science Delusion. I think the book has a, another title as well, The Science Delusion. You can try those ones. Uh, yeah, they, these are like the alternative thinkers that I, I like reading those books, the books by the alternative thinkers, who really uh, say that no, 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 especially Hallpike was very informative here. Darwinism, uh, the evolutionary theory of Darwin goes wrong because it assumes that uh, your genes are selfish. And that isn't so. Your genes actually exist in a, in, a, in a network, a cultural network with other organisms. And so you evolve as groups, as cultures, which makes so much sense. But of course, the, the 19th century Darwinists and so on, they didn't, they didn't want people to believe that anymore because they were trying to set society up to become individualistic. Now, individualism, why did we even need it at all? Well, for one reason, individuals cannot individually fight back against the government oppression so by by deconstructing by splitting you up into atomic individuals rational individuals pursuing your self-interest you are not going to fight back against the system against government against the globalists and by splitting up families into individuals instead of treating people as members of families but you treat them as individual citizens you can then send one brother to the east coast to work in a factory and another brother to the west coast to work in an office and so you can tear these families apart which was all good for the economy and for the financial interests of the of the rich elites and uh, so that's i think that i think that's just how it really is you know uh, to a large part the things they teach us in school schools are not really independent they are government funded usually right state schools most most schools in western europe are state schools right so they teach you a belief system they tell you this is the truth they tell you this is how it really is but really there's some really crafty scammers at work who really tried to con entire generations of people into believing something that wasn't so, but, but that benefited uh, the ruling classes of the West. It's just so, uh, it's just so intensely evil, <laughs> all of it, it's just so evil. So the culture can change the genes with, uh, yeah, well, you have to see it this way. Uh, I, I, I think I can try uh, to come up with an example. Uh, you have a certain uh, insect that only lives a day, but this insect can live in hot weather and in cold weather. And although it has hundreds of generations in the meantime, it still survives the winter and it still survives the summers. It doesn't evolve for the summer and it doesn't evolve for the winter. So how is that? Well, there is an interplay with the, with the, the group. The group knows although our individual members only live for a day we should not evolve for winter or summer we should rather uh be able to survive both conditions so we don't evolve and that that break system basically is uh that's culture so the group culture informs individuals don't adapt to this or that situation or in other cases do adapt to this or that situation um because it is the group that evolves together whereas as individuals you would have expected that individuals who evolve through the summer should then die out in the winter but this insect actually also you know survives there right yes my sound is fine it seems uh maybe turn up your volume you know so Jews don't want to be persecuted like in World War II. That's why they pacify. Well, you have to keep in mind, it may have been largely a, a media sham, you know, like there were, let's just, all I'm going to say is there were railroads from Berlin to Palestine to Baghdad. And you have to wonder if they really stopped at Auschwitz. People should homeschool. Yeah, that's what Shane Simonson also said. We need, we need to homeschool, you know. All right. 
Right, individualism is not in human nature. You can't beat it out of human nature. Yeah, that's just how it is. So I started this live stream talking about uh, living off the grid, uh, doing van life. You see these couples on YouTube or Instagram or wherever. They record their lives as they live on a boat, a narrow boat or so. Uh, and then they, uh, they, have, they have kids on these. They have babies on these. I think that's very inspirational for a lot of people to see that you don't have to live, work an office job and live in a city and drive to work each day. You could be living in a van, you could be living uh, off the grid, and you can be living in a boat, a sailboat, and you can have kids there as well. You can obviously, our nomadic ancestors, they had their kids wherever the hell they went anyway. So that is a, a very positive information. Yeah, you, sh you should, should watch some of those videos. It will give you some... Uh, inspiration yeah and i think we always say that the world is small but no there is so much territory that you could go to if you are willing to brave the wilderness there's so many places where you could settle down again like i always talk about the northwest eurasian woodland A large part of it is russian but there's also finland sweden and so on belarusia if the war with in ukraine is finally over there's a huge opportunity to seize that agricultural land and lots of people who are being driven off their land in Western Europe could resettle there. Lots of Dutch farmers could go to Russia, literally. They could start over, they could build massive, massive uh, cattle farms there to produce milk and meat. And, you know, so because China is largely a culture based on the rice paddies, so they have in the north, they have grain based agriculture in the south they have the rice based agriculture rice rice cultivation is a group effort you need a whole family to do to work together to do it because you you have to ask your neighbor for permission to flood the, the rice paddies because they're all connected whereas um, grain farming can be done by a single family and they don't need to ask their neighbors for permission so that's it and uh the thing with China is they're going to be very powerful, but they are traditionally not uh, a pastoralist. They are grain feeders, grain brains and rice brains. And of course, us type, the Northwest European types, we are the meat eaters par excellence. Uh, we are the milk drinkers par excellence. And so um, the only trouble I foresee with China is that China may want to impose their diet onto us. And we should immediately respond with guerrilla pastoralism. I'm going to do a whole video about this. Maybe I'll do a little podcast episode about this. Guerrilla pastoralism. Those are the two words that are going to become very important. We're going to do guerrilla pastoralism so that we can keep our milk and our meat wherever we go. There is a, there's a guy on YouTube who actually speaks about this uh, guerrilla pastoralism as well. It's like a guy who lives... <laughs> who lives on a bicycle. He has a little uh, cart behind him that he pulls along and he has a couple of goats and he does guerrilla pastoralism, guerrilla grazing. Uh, it's these kinds of pioneers. They look insane to us now. They look crazy, right, to us now. But these are the ones, uh, the pioneers who are acquiring new skill sets, new... Uh, they're they're figuring everything out so that the next generation the builders and the copiers can get to work and they can simply do what the pioneers found out about the same with van life i mean i, I suppose van life started like living in your car living in a van started in the 60s and 70s right with the hippie movement they have these volkswagen surfer vans right that's how it started and then uh, the pioneers laid the groundwork and then the new the builders come in and the copiers and the renters and the buyers right and then you see that these movements then balloon into something bigger and so i think new kinds of agriculture and new kinds of homesteading new kinds of off the grid living these videos attract millions and millions of viewers on youtube there's a dutch guy martijn dolaert he uh he bought apparently he bought some place in the alps in italy 
and he are he he has like a million views on each of his videos uh i thought they were quite boring actually but he shows you that you can do off the grid living at a low cost you, you, all you have to do is just pack up leave and just go and do it you know return to the land yeah return the people to the land and the land to the people A return to the land is happening in the Ozark region. Is that in Ger is that in Russia? Ozark, okay, because I don't know where that is, but it sounds like it. There's another YouTube channel called Arvo. Okay, I'll check it out as well. Oh, Ozark is Arkansas, you say. Okay, yeah, return to the land. Yeah, there's so, so there's lots of movements of people going off the grid because why would you want to live in these densely packed, shitty urban zones predominantly filled with people you don't want to live with anymore, right? <laughs> I mean, you can say all you want, but normies are racist. They will say they're not, but they are. Because if you're a normie white couple living in some Chicago suburb and it turns... 90% black, what's the normie white couple going to do? They're going to buy a van and do van life, right? They're going to leave. They're going to do homestead. They're going to go off the grid or they're going to go buy a house somewhere in the rural countryside. They leave. And so normies, you know, normies are, uh, all normies are racist. Just keep that in mind. They'll just call it something else. They'll just call it uh, van life or... <laughs> Right, so Asian foods are becoming popular in the West. Well, yeah, because we have a lot of Asian immigrants, that's for sure. But I get your point, yeah. Although I do like to eat rice, but pastas and so on, no, not so much. Bread, not so much. I prefer to eat, uh, you know, meat, milk, eggs, cheese. That's the better food. That's the superior food. All right, someone thinks that big cities are always diverse. That's not really true, but, but with more opportunities. I, I think less opportunities, really. You get a small cubicle to live in. What I hate about big cities is the noise and the, 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 the shitty air quality. And that everything costs money. Right, yeah. No, I mean, just me personally. Uh, pasta can be very tasty, but I overeat because some re when I eat a, lot, a plate of pasta, I don't feel satisfied. So I'll eat another plate and then I get sick. You know? <laughs> I eat some chicken liver sometimes, yeah. I don't know why somebody tries to promote big cities of having more opportunities. With, when the Industrial Revolution started, basically what they did was they sent their children to the factories. And there were no opportunities there other than working 18 hours a day to keep yourself alive, you know, living in shitty conditions. With, there was more disease in the cities, you know, and nothing to do. So I wouldn't describe that as opportunities, no. Opportunities for what? The only real opportunity that matters is that you get your hands on your own land, enough land, to either do pastoralism or grow your own food on and have a homestead and have what you want there. Uh, you know, you may want to have a little uh, solar system to uh, generate some electricity, right? To keep, to keep connected. But at some point in the future, I think people will even just do away with the internet. Because once you've set yourself up as a homesteading community, not just by yourself, but say you have like five or six other families near you on, in walkable distance doing something similar, you don't need the internet anymore. You just need those five families. You can help each other raise your kids. You know, eventually you may have a little school during the day or so, right? Uh, you can build that shit yourself. I think that's totally possible when people return to the land. They just eventually uh, realize they don't need the internet and they don't even need electricity. Why, why would you need electricity if you can have candles, right? You know, so that's my the way I see it. Uh, it's not regression at all. We're not going 
back to the 1950s. We're going forward to a new future where people will feel a lot more powerful, a lot more in charge of themselves in their life, you know? Yeah, mechanical beats electrical. Yeah, I would say that too, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll look into the Ozark project. Yeah, of course. Uh, maybe, if, is there something more important to mention? Um, yeah, I saw this documentary about a Swedish farmer using 19th century farm equipment, meaning no gas, no engines, no electric. It was it was all mechanical. He had like a sort of bicycle system uh, that would help him. He would pedal the pedals and then some equipment behind him would basically plow around the uh, plow and plant potatoes, apparently. It was a mechanical device that did that. And so, so you see that that's what you need. You need, you need mechanical equipment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The everything bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I just don't see a future for our people in the withering away in big cities, in small apartments with the digital ID and the fake money. No, you want land, fresh air, fresh water. All right, that's what you want. That's where you want to root yourself again. Replant your roots. All right, uh, I've been speaking for 50 minutes or so. I usually round it up around around an hour or so because I, uh, I noticed that when I I've got nothing more to say. It's better to just uh, cut the cut the broadcast. So uh, let's see. Uh, I think I'll do this again next week, probably Thursday. So I'll see you around that time. So thanks for watching. You can go to uh, my YouTube channel at the Great Johannes, or uh, what else do I promote? I have a Telegram channel at Johannes MK, uh, and I'm also on Twitter, Twitter X as Johannes MKX. All right. Uh, See you guys.